Check, please. Welcome back to Everything Money. In this video, we're going to talk about Disney, the company, and the stock. We'll show you the financials, what their past and where they've been through, especially through COVID, and where they're heading. Jimmy from Learn to Invest is going to be on our channel in the next couple of weeks. He likes Disney, and we will definitely talk about it. But in this video, we'll show you the financials and where this is going. I give you Paul Gabriel, a man who is still a proud card-carrying member of the Mickey Mouse Club. Paul, take it away. Disney, guys, is a, is a company we've looked at a lot because mm -hmm. Disney fell so much. I think 40% of their revenue or something like that comes mm -hmm. from the parks, and they were shut down for a long period of time. But then they created Disney Plus and they expected to have like 10 million users of Disney Plus. And then the pandemic came and all of a sudden it was 120 million users of Disney Plus. Yeah. I have Disney Plus. I don't watch Disney. You don't even watch it. Yeah, you I don't just... even watch it. But I, it's funny. I added up all the streaming services that I have and it's still less than cable. I'm like, okay, I'll just add Disney Plus to it. I think I got HBO. Like I got something along with it. I was like, yeah, I might as well take it. So let's go to our eight pillars software. Type in Disney. Okay. Okay, look at the stock. 140. It was a high of 192 in the last year. Now, I've mentioned before, when you're at home, at least, you do dress like um, Donald Duck with I do. just a shirt and no pants. A year ago last week, Disney hit, basically hit a high of $202 a share. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so um, I was trying to think of a retort to your there comment. Is none. There is There's none. none. There's no retort. I'm sorry. Now, they're in the news, Paul, of course. The, um, the LGBTQ community is upset with some of the some of the things that the governor in Florida is, is putting into action. So they're, they're planning a walkout. Obviously there, there is a magical experience you, you, you get when you go to Disney and the employees are very much a part of it, Paul. And so um, I can't imagine this will have a drastic effect on the company, but there, there's definitely, they're definitely in the news. Um, and I, I can't, think yeah, I don't it. know what the walkout's about. And frankly, it doesn't matter in, in, in the sense of if they want to walk out more power to them, that's your rights as a, I think they're union. I'm sure they're union mm -hmm. down there. Um, the rights, you know, it'd be hard for them either way. The point is, um, this isn't going to drastically shape, shape your opinion as a value investor. Would you no, say? No, I'm going to look at it and say, listen, major companies have unions and major companies are going to be at the, now some unions are stronger than others. A part of the reason I avoid the auto industry is because the auto union, because I think it inhibits the, the, uh, the profit potential, but I don't think with Disney that profit potential is really that inhibited. Let's go to the income statement and look at more stable years. 2019, they did 70 billion in revenue and they had 11 billion in profit. Okay. That's almost, you know, 14, 15%. That's not bad for down bottom line profit after taxes. Okay. And the funny thing is look at their income statement. Look at their revenue. Even during COVID, it went from 70 billion down to 65 and now it's at 67.4. So it's growing. It's very little. Don't expect there to be major growth. Now let's go look at the analyst expectations. So this is Disney's analyst expectations on earnings per share profit for the next five years. They're doing 448 as expected this year. And in five years, expected to almost double. Okay, so that's 15% earnings per share growth in the next five years. Maybe 13 or 12%, whatever the number ends up being. Let's look at their revenue growth rate. They're expected to do 85 billion this year from 67 billion, according to analysts. And in September, 2026, 114 billion. So guys, there is a lot of growth potential available in the stock, okay? I still expect to an, an exhibit some caution when buying very, very large companies, okay? Because they, it's just, the streaming business is a very, very tough business now because everybody's doing streaming. I have to think at some point there'll be some sort of consolidations of streaming. Now, is Disney likely to come out on top on that one? They own a lot of titles. They have a studio where they make movies and they make uh, animated films that nobody else will be able to get. That's pretty awesome, if you ask me. So it seems like if a recession is ahead, that obviously less people will be going to Disney. The, the gas it takes to get there, uh, I, I'm looking. Yeah, at, that's I, a short-term blip, though. Like as a value investor, I'm not looking at short-term blips. I'm looking at, at the short-term blip as an opportunity to buy. So the question becomes: Is it worth it today to buy this company, based on what I see for the long foreseeable future? And that's what we're going to do because every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. Here's their eight pillars. Oh boy. Good Lord in heaven. Guys, this is, their shares outstanding increased. They're diluting people. Everything's bad here. Does that mean it's not a good stock to buy? No, not necessarily. I own Carnival Cruise Line. That has like eight ch X's. Nine checks. Nine mm -hmm. X's. 24 X's. <laughs> yes. So you have to sit there and analyze the company. They're not paying a dividend anymore. Look at their five-year average free cash flow. 
4.86 billion, but last year they only did 1.48 billion. All right, so it's it's still coming back. So let's just go right to the stock analyzer tool. And the reason we created all this, guys, when you're listening, you click on this video because you want to learn what you should pay for Disney stock, right? So in our community, it was created because everyone in the community requested us to make the software, so we delivered it. The point was, nobody wanted to wait for us to make videos on every stock they wanted. So now with the software, whenever you have a stock you want to look up, you just go to the software and do it. You get everything you've seen here so far, all the eight pillars, all the financial statements here. You get the eight pillar screen. You also get everything on this front page. The retirement calculator, stock analyzer tool, which you'll see in two seconds, eight pillar portfolio, where you can put your entire portfolio in there and see how it compares on an eight pillar basis. Exclusive video content. Every single day, Seth, Mo, and I release videos exclusive to only the people who have our app and have our software on the desktop. Watch list. You'll see this as well. If Disney isn't the right price for you today, you can add Disney to your watch list at a certain price. It'll notify you. The software, the app will notify you when the stock has hit that price. You get everything down below as well. And the biggest thing though, you get the Everything Money community. Guys, research is long and hard. Research is tough. The community here makes it easy. There's over 6,000 people here ready to help you. You can go in there, type in Disney, go exactly to the chat where they sit there and says, hey, we're talking about Disney. Ask your questions. It's a lonely world out there for value investors. I'm sure you're the only one who thinks this way out of all your friends. But now you have 6,000 other friends to talk to. All of this, guys, is, only, is available for only $1 per day. $1 per day. That alone, the community alone is worth the $1 per day. You get all of this att attached to it. $1 per day, everythingmoney.com or patreon.com are the two ways to sign up. Patreon for international users. Guys, sign up if you can increase your returns by a measly 1% or 2% a year or decrease your losses by 1% or 2% a year. This will lead to hundreds of thousands, if not millions. $1 per day. Go sign up now. Give me that stock analyzer because uh, this is an interesting company. I mean, like you said, it's going to be around in 10 years. It's been going strong and could get stronger. Yep. Okay, so revenue growth. According to the analysts, they were looking at roughly a 20, 25% revenue growth over the next five years. So what is that? Four or 5% a year. So I'm going to go two, four, and 6%. Let's say they just crush everybody. Profit margin. Now I'm, I'm going to ignore last year because that was a smaller year. I'm going to go focus on the five and 10 year numbers. So I'm going to go eight, 10, and 12%. Free cash flow margin. I'm going to go seven, eight and a half, and 10%. PE. 13, 15, 17, 13, 15, 17. And then for my return, guys, I'm going to go 12 and percent. Why do I do 12 and percent? Because you can invest in an ETF and get nine or 10%. So in order to invest in an individual stock with margin of safety, pick 12 and percent at least. Higher risk needs a high reward. The more speculative the company, the younger it is, the higher the return should be because the higher the return, the lower the price of the stock. Mm -hmm. I hit the analyze button. This is going to be ugly, guys. Current price is um, one. Current price is one forty one. We have a low of low thirties, a high of eighty, and a mid of around fifty bucks. Guys, honestly, it sounds about right. It's just a, I thought even before COVID, it was a pretty expensive stock. So this is where I stand now. If I want to be notified when it hits eighty bucks a share, I hit this button right here, hit below, notify me, and go. I'll go to my watch list, and there it is, right here at the top. Price target if it goes below eighty dollars a share. Very simple. Now I just wait. I wait for it hit to that price and then the, the software will update me. But I look at this company as, yes, it's an awesome company. Yes, is it, can you pay a little bit more for it? Because it has, it's an amazing, you know, it, it's, if you, if I gave you $80 billion say and say replicate Disney, you couldn't. I love when you say that, yeah. You couldn't. And they have this- I stole that from Warren Buffett, by the way. They have this culture, Paul. You know, I just went down to Orlando that works with a company that makes stuff for Disney. And that- the pride, I could not believe it. The pride, careful consideration these people take in making these inanimate objects that are going to sit on a table on a Disney cruise is astonishing. They do not cut corners. And as we can see, they can survive terrible things like recession. And I think a guy like, Berg, like Warren Buffett at Berkshire would probably pay a higher price than I would for Disney because he probably sees the value of the fact that it's a moat, the moat of all moats. I mean, this is one of the best moats in the world. You're not going to replicate Disney. What's the market cap of Disney? Market Two, cap of Disney is? 256 billion. How much? 256 billion. If, if I give you half a trillion, I don't think you can match it on Disney. That's the point. 
that's the moat you're talking about right now. Well, they got, they got almost 100 years of fandom, you know? Yep, like exactly. And so it's hard to replicate this or start it back up. If you want to trade Disney into quicker pace, we're going to join Mo on location. Not at Disney. That would be rad. But uh, he's going to show us how to trade this stock. Go ahead, Mo. For those of you that watch the morning show, Disney is my mind-blowing stock of COVID. You had a company that came down to these depressing lows of $80, they shut down 40 to 45 percent of their revenue, which was cruises and cruises and parks, and they went to all time highs. They get all these people back in parks, which was 200, 200 and call it 203 dollars a share, and they basically have been cut in half, almost in half since then. So I don't get it, but hey, let's trade it. So let's see what what goes on here with uh, Disney. They have not had a nice run through the sweet spot since May of 2020. They had a run down in May of 2021. And then it hasn't been good for them uh, really since November of, of last year. So let's see. This has been a very interesting stock. What I would want to see here from a long-term perspective is see if we can get this red line to really blast into the sweet spot. I kind of want to see this thing around this 50% level. Yes, it. I wanted to, obviously I want it to cross 32%. But I kind of want to see it around this 50% level before I do anything. Because they have not proven that they can break through 32% and consistently stay there. So, because there's some kind of news that will come out and send them down, send them down, et cetera. Don't forget, Disney is very susceptible to the volatility of this market. So, with that being said, and not being able to get into the sweet spot from a long-term perspective, I think I'd rather come and uh, swing trade this. Disney always has really great engulfing candlesticks, both up and down, and you've had some in the past six, seven, eight trading sessions. Volume's a little light, but with this, this kind of stochastic that pushed up and these types of engulfing candlesticks, I think that you're really good to go. Now, I do not foresee Disney breaking through this $150 level, this 150 day, which is the 100 day moving average, anytime soon, unless you get a ton of volume pushing in there. Better yet for Disney, and surprising to me, it is a stock where you can go and day trade often. It has a lot of really good trends, it's controversial, it's news driven they come out with a new movie or announce a new movie, it's going to go. So what I would do is come over here. When you get over 80%, buy the engulfing candlesticks. Yesterday was absolutely beautiful. You had really good buying volume coming in, over 80%, an amazing run up. I know there were people in the bid and ask on our live stream that we do live multiple times per week, three times per week, that were catching Disney and getting really great runs. I'm even noticing today, even a little bit this afternoon, You uh, this yep, this afternoon, you could have caught a little bit of a run. So Disney's a great stock to day trade. It's a great stock to swing trade. Eventually, Disney will be a really good stock to play long-term again. That time is just not right now. All right, that's Disney. We'll keep you updated. I'm hoping the stock will go lower, Paul. I'd love to own this as an all-time amazing stock, but the numbers gotta be right. And as you an investor at home, they gotta be right, and we'll help you through this. Subscribe, follow thumbs up, watch more videos. We'll see you in the next one.